So I think we're going to start here. I'm going to share my screen. I'm the host of today's um, session uh, for Epic Week, Epic Week Manitoba. So first virtual career fair that um, has been put on by a number of partners and excited to be hosting. Um, just wanted to welcome you all and I wanted to just go over some of the etiquette that we're going to be having today. Uh, for people who are joining, keep your video cameras off during the session and uh, if you have questions for the presenter, try to save them for the end of the presentation. Presentation is about 20 minutes in length and question and answer session is at the end and that'll be about 10 minutes long. So uh, the session is being recorded, which is why we're asking everyone to keep their cameras off. I'm from Tech Manitoba, so I'm the uh, project manager for the youth programming wing. If anybody is interested in learning about careers in tech, you can go and visit our website and uh, look at our pivot programming, uh, which has all sorts of information about salary ranges and the types of jobs that's in tech, because it's a very hot um, area to be uh, getting involved in if you're thinking about post-secondary. And it's really appropriate that I'll be hosting the session with our uh, facilitator, who is, uh, her name is Karen Fatichur. Did I say it right, Karen? Fatichur? That works. Fatichur? <laughs> from 360 Ag Consulting um, and she's going to give us a delightful presentation. Um, she's based in rural Manitoba. Um, they do a lot of work in agriculture and uh, they use technology as well. So I am just going to actually wanted to show you a lot of our sponsors that are participating in today's event. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that um, our presenter can then take over. Do you have control of the screen now? All right, thanks, Barney. All right, how are we doing? Up, oh, running, good. good. You just need to run it, yeah. It's not full screen, so if you can hit the run slideshow, it'll be full screen. Perfect. Oh, okay, it's there? Good. Okay, so as Marnie said, my name's Karen Futtiger and I'm an agronomist and co-owner of 360 Ag Consulting in Roblin, Manitoba. Um, I have been an agronomist since 2003 when I came out of the U of S, but I will leave more introductions and information for my next slide. So the main reason I went into agriculture when I was a kid, I loved animals, I loved cattle, I loved being out on the tractor, I loved being out on the farm, and it just seemed like a natural progression for me to do my post-secondary in agriculture. So I attended the U of S in Saskatoon, and if you're ever in Saskatoon, by all means, please stop in. As you can see, it's a beautiful, big glass building. It has a huge atrium in the middle, um, lots of plants, lots of indoor and outdoor greenhouses. It's just an amazing experience. So if you are interested in agriculture in Saskatoon, please, by all means, check it out. This little man here is a guy that most agriculture students from U of S know. This is a little concrete statue in the atrium and lots of students have spent a lot of time contemplating life on that bench beside him. I know this. One of the highlights of my university education was I took a semester abroad in Uppsala, Sweden at the University um, of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala. And here's just a shot of Uppsala. It was such an amazing town and to go from rural Manitoba, Saskatchewan, to live in a city like this, to walk and bike to school past sites like this every day was quite a change. And this is a shot of what the campus looked like. Um, met a lot of people, got to network with students, ag students from around the country, from around the world, and now have contacts at universities and post-secondary institutions around the world. I've got friends doing research on apple trees in Washington, to doing studies on development in Africa out of universities in Sweden. So very, very cool experience that I had to mention. So 360 Ag Consulting is the company that my husband and I run. Um, basically, I'll give you a little background about how we came to be. I left university in 2003 three or finished university. I went to Brandon and worked for Cargill as an assistant for a marketing rep. And after that, um, 
it was about six to nine months I spent in training. I moved to Dauphin and worked at Cargill there as a farm marketing rep. So what I basically did was did calls with producers, bought grain, tried to find out their fertilizer needs. But what I really, really loved about my job at that time was being out in the field scouting with them. Um, I liked knowing what they were growing, what weeds they had, what herbicides we could use. Um, I really liked that aspect of their business. So how our business came to be is my husband, who I was working with at the time, also at Cargill, he, we went to meet a friend during summer holidays and he told us how he went to this conference and that there was a way that technology could better serve our producers to help them grow better yields and or save money on fertilizer. So we started looking into this and realized that yes, this could be done and it was something that was of need in Manitoba. So that following spring, we both quit our jobs and Miles started up the company and I took a different job working with Dow as a chem rep because we were too scared to both tie into our entrepreneurial spirit. And for a couple years, Miles worked on the business and then things got really busy that I decided that it was time that I could quit my full time job and start in the business. So that was in 2008 and at the same time we had been getting a lot of business in Saskatchewan and closer to the Manitoba Saskatchewan border. So we were relocated to Roblin. So for the first two years, we ran basically the business out of our closet in a spare room and moved to Roblin and expanded to include our business in the basement. In 2016, we finally took the jump and bought an office in Roblin and moved out of our home base business. And right now we have offices at Wrights Equipment in Dauphin and in Roblin and we operate all along the west side of the province from Russell to Swan River running east to Dauphin McCreary and we have an amazing team right now in 2020 that's us so there's nine of us all together with agronomists working out of the offices in Roblin and in Dauphin and two admin staff supporting us and we could have not gotten anywhere we have been without the amazing team we have that I'm extremely, extremely proud of. So what is it we do? So there's two parts of our business that I'm going to speak to you about today. I think they're the most important and they're definitely the most cool. So the first one is our variable rate fertility program. So what that does is it's based off of soil testing. So I feel like I need to give you a little background on what soil testing is. So on the left, you see a guy, he's got a soil test probe and between his two hands are basically the steps. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna put that probe in the ground, he's gonna jump on those steps and he's gonna get a two foot sample. So he's gonna take the six to 24 inch sample out of the probe and he's gonna throw that in one bucket. And then he's gonna take the remaining dirt, dirt, which is six to 24 inches and put it in another bucket. And then that soil is going to get analyzed. So producers in Manitoba basically look at four main macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. So the analysis will come back and we'll sit down with the producer and go through it and see what the soil needs to properly grow the yields that the producer is expecting. Now on the right is a GPS reference border of a producer's field as well as the points. So the points are where the soil test has been taken. So they're GPS referenced so we can go back to those points year after year to see how the soil is changing. So this is what has been done since time began in terms of soil testing. So what our process is, is a little bit different and much more intense. So here's an example of a big 750 acre field. And as you see the lines going across it, 
basically we have split that field into seven different little fields that we are going to soil test separately. So as we all know, satellites surround the Earth at all points in time and are constantly taking data points on what's going on on our planet. So those companies take this information and can sell it. So we buy this information, the satellite images of these fields and analyze this. So on this field, for example, we're going to look at one of the northeast quarters. And we've taken this field and we've taken the satellite imagery and basically broke down that one portion of the field into five different zones. So there you can see the five different zones, the different colors. Zone one is the least producing area of the field and zone two is better, three is better, four is better, and five is the best. So then you notice the points on each one of those little shapes within, that's where we're soil testing. So we're gonna go to each point, and zone one, we're gonna have a zero to six and a six to 24 sample. Zone two, zero to six, six to 24, and so on and so forth. All the zone ones get packed together, all the zone twos get packed together. Then we sit down and go through and analyze why the soil is producing differently and what do we need to do to make a better yield or a better crop on that field. So in order to do that, we need to sample and this is where things get fun. So this is one of the Jeeps that we use to soil test. We have all the vehicles in our fleet named and what you're looking at here is, or who you're looking at here is Glenda. So Glenda's on the left, she's got big tires. So if we need to go through mud or some bad situations, sometimes snow, that's why she has the big tires. And on the right, you can see that the inside of the Jeep is probably not what you're expecting. So on the right, you can see that the passenger seat has been totally taken out and you can't see it in the photo, but there's a hole cut out in the floor and the big, column that is in place of the passenger seat is the soil test probe. So what we do is we use GPS and a computer to drive to the certain points on the field and we don't even have to get out of the truck. We can punch the hole right there, bring it into the cab and the buckets you see. So the paper is this where the zero to six will go and the plastic bucket with the plastic bags lined in it is where the six to 24 soil tests go. Then this all gets packed up and shipped to a lab for analysis. This is what it looks like when the analysis comes back. So the different zones and the different nutrients and organic matter, pH of the soil is all there to go through. So we will do this over and over for every field, for every zone and sit down with the grower and ask them what their yield expectations are for the field. For example, in zone five, because it's growing us the best crop, we might need to put more nitrogen down. Whereas zone one, maybe it's just sandy, maybe a fer fertility isn't our limiting factor. So no matter what we put, we're not gonna grow a huge crop there. Likewise, we can cut the fertilizer back and save the producer money. So we do this for every field. So if we go back to the 750 acre field that I just showed you, these are the seven different maps. So just like I showed you in the one example, we would do this over and over and over. And it is quite a bit of fun. Then in the spring, when time comes, as you see on the left, there's the tractor, the drill, and the tanks. So the tractor will have a GPS unit on it to tell us where exactly it is. The tank will have four different products in, and on the right is an example of a monitor that is controlling that. So the GPS is talking to the monitor on the right, and it will tell the tank what products to put out at what rate, depending on where the farmer is in the field. So the maps we will put into that monitor and that will control everything on that tank. 
So this is an example of what the finished product would look like. This is a nitrogen map for that said field. So there's 16 different fertilizer rates on there, ranging from 236 all the way up to 333 pounds per acre of urea. So quite a big difference. In normal situations, what would happen is a guy might just take a middle ground, middle ground, say 277 pounds and put it all over the field, which he might be spending too much money in some places and in the meantime, not putting enough fertilizer in other places. So this is a picture of me and my buddy share. This is us soil testing in fall. Um, basically our fall season is when we try and get most of our soil tests done. So as soon as the combine leaves the field, we're out there soil testing and our timeline's tight. We like to get our, our soil testing done generally before there's too much snow on the ground. So it's a lot of work and it's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, I get to take my dog to work with it, me every day and it's a lot of fun. The other part of our business is our field scouting program. So when a farmer seeds the crop, it just isn't over. There's a lot of work that needs to be followed up. Guys need to know how their crop is growing, if there's any bugs, if there's any weeds, if there are, what he needs to spray. Um, Technology is changing all the time. Products are changing all the time. Chemistries are changing all the time. And at the meantime, farms are growing larger and larger and larger. So this allows producers to spend their time where they need to, and we can help them and give them more time to do those things. So again, my buddy Cher comes with me, and we have ATVs that we cruise across the fields with before the crop gets too big. So that's an example of one of our rigs. So here's an example of what we're looking for in the fields. Um, in the top left right now, for example, we're finding a lot of stranded seed in the ground because of drought conditions. We would like a rain in this area. So farmers will need to know why their crop isn't coming up. Is it rain? Are there bugs in there? So right now we're spending a lot of time seeing what kind of shape the fields are in. The middle picture is a picture of some frozen canola. So in this situation, the producer needed to know that it froze and that in fact, those plants are not going to grow and he needs to come back and reseed. On the bottom left, that is a picture of some hail damage on a canola plant. In this case, the producer needs to know this so he can get an adjuster out and put an insurance claim in. And the bottom in the middle is an example of some cutworm damage. Cutworms have come off, they've snipped the plant and that canola plant will not grow back. So the producer needs to be on top of that and possibly spray an insecticide to stop further damage. On the top right, there's lots of weeds growing. There is a canola crop seeded there. So the producer needs to know that he needs to spray immediately and we generally recommend what product. And the bottom right is just an example of our day to day looking at different varieties. Um, in this case, I've got two different varieties of canola. One's a lot taller, one's a lot shorter. And it's good to know these things with boots on the ground agronomy so that when the yield comes in, we can sit down and meet with the growers and grow through this and know what works best for their farm. This is an example of a crop report that would get sent out. One thing technology has allowed us to do is our communications with producers have changed a lot in the last even five years. Um, we've implemented Zoom. We've been using Zoom meetings to talk to producers, text, email. Um, when I'm in the field, I have iPad or a computer with me or both. And we're basically getting data back and forth to our customers in whatever way they find most convenient. And what producers want the most is to tell us their crops look like this and they can go spend some downtime at the lake with their family because that is one beautiful canola crop. 
In terms of highlights of my career, um, I, I'm really happy that I chose going into agriculture. Um, so I'm just going to touch on some of the highlights and what I've seen in the last almost 20 years. Summer jobs have given me so many different opportunities. The first the first year out of ag, I worked for a pro, um, crop diversification center. So we grew things like hemp and borage, looked into trees like seed buckthorn, and it's the basis of what our agricultural economy is based on in Manitoba. So it was a really great experience to do something different than what I traditionally had seen grown on our farms. The next two summers I worked for a chemical company, so I was doing research, um, going all across Saskatchewan to different research trials, seeing what was coming down the pipeline in terms of chemistries and how they were going to work. Another very amazing, unique experience. And my last summer I spent as a sales rep and I was across southern Manitoba and that was also very interesting to see different farms and how different ways and technologies they utilized and as well as meeting different people. I love meeting people and I love the ability that this job gives me to connect with people. Another, in, another great thing about being in agriculture is how diverse it is. Um, versatility of an ag degree, ag diploma, you can go into banking, you can go into education, you can go into research, sales, food science, animal sciences. The, the experiences are endless. The opportunities I have from owning a business and being in agriculture are also very immense. Um, I got to be a part of the Manitoba Agricultural Services Board of Directors, which gave me lots of into insight into government policy. And it was a very, very unique learning experience for me. Being on different boards or advisory committees, um, agronomy boards, you're constantly networking with people, going to shows, seeing what's out there, seeing different technologies, it's amazing what you can learn from other people. And within our own company, I think the one of the things I'm most proud of is we we were constantly using different ways of building our maps. Um, we have about four or five technology platforms that we use on a daily basis to handle all the information coming in. And we had been to different trade shows and talk to different companies and we really had a hard time finding someone who had a program that could process all the soil tests in a way that could make us be more efficient and get information to our customers quicker. So we hired um, a, a company out of Winnipeg to design our software platform, which was um, very challenging, but also one of the most rewarding parts of my job. Lastly, the most important thing I believe we do is working with the people and connecting to their families and businesses and goals. This is something I'm extremely proud of and that gives me the passion for what I do every day. So there's my husband talking to one of our producers before he goes to spray and one of our customers up and coming farmers in training. Just to further back that statement up, this, this was one of our first cub customers and he had a seed company and farm and this was his retirement party a few years ago and he just embraced anything new and any kind of technology and he taught us a lot about being kind to people, being kind to your employees, to your families, to your customers and always improving your business. So I just thought I would end my presentation with one of our mentors. This is my contact information if anyone needs to get a hold of me. Um, 
email, phone, and as well as a link to our website if you want to 